I took my share of the money and went to Europe the following summer. And that's where I meet the guy in this next, uh, next, next excerpt. Uh, it, was, it was only a few years ago, in 2009, I think. And I was going to France just to ride the public bike system. I didn't go to museums. I didn't eat a lot of food. I certainly didn't shop. And um, so I thought, oh, I'm going to call Peter. This is the guy. I hadn't seen him for 42 years. Peter was a German tour guide. He took German tourists around Paris. And when I met him, I was 20 years old, and we used to, you know, I used to just follow him around. I didn't know if he'd remember me, and he said, of course I would remember you. <laughs> <laughs> you very long legs and a very short skirt. <laughs> Anyhow, I said, maybe we can meet for coffee and come to Paris. And he said, ugh, coffee. We have to have more than coffee. Then he explained that he eats two meals a day. He has breakfast at noon, and at 3 o'clock every day, he eats ribs at the same Chinese restaurant. <laughs> so we agreed to meet at 3 o'clock at my hotel. And I was out biking all day, and my two brains, my left brain and my right brain, were having this discussion. Like, the one brain was saying, oh, you know, a new romance possibly, and the left brain was saying, don't be ridiculous. You know, this guy, an ocean away, brews his coffee at noon, you know, forget <laughs> it. So anyhow, I was listening to that brain, the sensible brain, and about 2.58, I parked my bike, I'm wearing a yellow windbreaker, I have helmet hair, and I go running to my hotel. I soon really regret the Lance Armstrong look, because <laughs> standing there at the doorway, like wearing blue jeans and in a Superman pose, was the most gorgeous, movie star handsome guy I had ever seen. And I said, Peter, and he flashed me a pity look and said, no. <laughs> and I went inside, and I waited a few minutes, and in comes a paunchy old guy, wearing chinos and walking shoes. And uh, we, we head to the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> And we order, and he says, now, I'm not going to order ribs, because ribs are too messy to eat in front of a woman. So he orders chicken. Okay, so we're eating, and this is where I pick up here. Peter hands me a small photo album. As I flip through it, he provides commentary. My eyes become riveted to an old black and white shot of him, shirtless. I begin to notice how quiet he's become. I look up to see him squeezing his head between his fists, like a vise, like this. And I'm thinking, what is this? Mm -hmm. I swallowed a chicken bone, he goes. <laughs> oh, God, I cried. Do you want me to do the Heimlich? <laughs> no, he answers, making more throat noises and pointing to the photograph. A sad picture was taken in Africa <coughs> the year I adopted Rose. Oh, nice, really nice, I say, trying to act normal. <laughs> and this one is Rose with her <coughs> three children. He reaches behind his head and pounds his back with his fist. <laughs> so cute, just adorable, I say. It would have gone on this way, except that he bolts up, throws a fistful of euros on the table, and announces, I'm going to the hospital. Wait, I'll go with you. No, I want to go alone. As he dashes toward the door, I call after him. Well, phone and let me know how you're doing. The rest of the day, I alternate between worrying about him and thinking how embarrassed I would be if I choked on a chicken bone an hour into our reunion. I keep checking my cell, no messages. Wait a minute, I wonder. Did Peter fake the chicken bone? <laughs> nah, my ego wouldn't hear of it. Before going to sleep, I phone him, no answer. I picture poor Peter lying on a cold hospital bed, or worse, on a cold stone slab. Though I admit, due to my attraction to a good story, the idea of him dying from a chicken bone kind of appeals to me. But no, I really want to see him again, again, and hear more of his yarns. I drift off imagining Peter recovering and me moving to Paris. I keep phoning. Two days after the faithful Chinese meal, I dial his number the second I wake up. You cannot imagine how relieved I am to hear his voice. Peter, you're alive! No, this is Friedrich. No one has seen Peter for two days. Oh, yeah. <laughs>